We are starting now with the unconferencing. I'll uh, quickly tell you all what is it all about. So when we decided, um, when we are talking about digital transformation and the series and we, we are uh, involving and embedding the CEOs and the CXOs in, in, in different roundtables, the idea is to make sure that we, we come together as a community. And when we come together as a community, the idea is to make sure that we talk about the shared problems and we talk about the shared solutions. So this, um, this is how it's going to unfold the next 30 minutes where all of you are the action orienters. So um, I see three tables. Uh, originally, uh, we had thought that we will segregate it as per the area of um, interest, concerns, and skill sets that you have, which was uh, the marketing, um, uh, the, the operations, and the finance. But because, again, uh, being responsive to the realities, we'll have a mixed bag of tables. So the three tables that I see, uh, are the three groups. Uh, I would re uh, request the two gentlemen here to uh, join the table number one so that we have a balance. Uh, we will have 15 minutes uh, for each table. Each table has to um, discuss three uh, problems and the solutions to these three problems when it comes to digitization or digital transformation. Uh, all Each table will uh, select one leader one representative after your 15 minutes are over please take down the three problems and the three solutions that you collectively must have spoken about discussed deliberated and those three representative will be part of the panel along with rachna whom we have from kpmg she's a partner at kpmg so we will have a quick um, uh, 10 15 minutes discussion where all these all your representative will talk about the problems and the solutions that you have spoken about Please, please feel free to um, to add your inputs. So, um, uh, do we have these three tables? And your time will start now. So, it's 11:34. Uh, we have 15 minutes. Uh, I would want to understand, uh, believe that all of you know each other. If you don't, start with a quick round of introduction for each one of you within the, the table. Uh, 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 make sure that you have one leader who will be representing you here. And uh, yeah, after 15 minutes, we'll, we'll have a quick panel discussion. And uh, you, the coffee will be served on your table, so we are not having any break. The idea is to make sure that each one of you can get back to your work and uh, do what is um, probably keeping you, you awake here. So any questions, I will be more than happy to uh, answer them. But otherwise, you can start interacting with your own table and uh, we will connect with you after 15 minutes. I would uh, request Sh um, Shamik and the Microsoft leadership team to also look and see and talk if, if there is anything or if somebody is getting stuck uh, anywhere. Yeah, 15 minutes is all we have. <coughs> Did you want to have a uh, handheld mic and uh, make sure that uh, you you you're moving around thank you table number two has only five representatives so if I can uh, have some people uh, shifting into table number two it will be nice we'll have a well balanced
so we have uh, now the last five minutes I would request each team to please I'm sure you must have chosen your leader who's going to represent you as the panelist so if you haven't done that please do it now and also uh, request you to please jot down note down or the three problem areas in the solution areas make two copies and I will have to repeat this whole thing again
So the time is up. Uh, in fact, we, uh, we have 20 minutes where you deliberated. Are the teams done with the, the discussion? Can we start? Few more minutes. Teams, we need to wind up now, probably the unfinished discussion can be then part of the of the panel discussion so uh, quickly please nominate the leader jot down the problem areas and the solutions and make two copies you'll have to go give one to rachna so yeah So I now uh, invite uh, Ms. Rachna Nath. She is a partner of KPMG. She is going to be our moderator. Uh, a round of applause for Rachna so that uh, you get out of your discussion mode. We still have a panel discussion to discuss, um, uh, delegates. So Rachna, uh, the stage is yours. Uh, I would request each of the teams to please the representative or the leader should please come up here and join Rachna and introduce themselves. Please make sure that you take the copy of, um, of the suggestions. Even if you don't have the copy, probably if, you, if you can articulate it, it's, it's not a problem. And may I also invite Samik, uh, can you please come here and join us on the panel? And Mr. Ashish Adhikari. Uh, Rachna will be doing the formal introductions. So over to you, Rachna. Hello. Can we have the other panelists as well, and then we can get started. Can I please have the other panelists come up out here, please? But on a lighter note, I just love the way that you all did the job and I got the clap. So thanks for that. But can I just have the other panelists, please, if the tables have decided. Do we have all the representations? Yes, please. Also, teams, you have to see the, whether you have chosen the leader carefully and whether he is representing you well. Uh, maybe there are points for that. So uh, please represent your team aptly. And during the conversation, uh, we'll make sure that all of you are also asked questions. I am Rachna. I didn't get in I'll probably take the side seat.
Hi, good afternoon. Uh, can you just take our seats and uh, then get started? And you can be wherever you are. Yeah, thanks. Uh, before I start, actually, I just wanted to congratulate uh, Microsoft and ET for this session particularly, because it's probably for me the first of its kind, and I thought, you know, amazingly good, because all the issues that uh, we talked about actually came from people who live, uh, live that day in and day out. So uh, I think congratulations for that. As far as uh, I'm concerned, uh, you know, Archana has already said I'm a partner with uh, KPMG. I lead the digital practice uh, out there, but what I'll do is, Abhiraj, why don't you just take a few moments and introduce yourself? Sure. We'll just go through a round of introduction before uh, can we... Can everybody hear me? Great. Uh, this is Abhiraj. I, I come from a company called eDynamic. We are a digital marketing and technology agency. Uh, we are close partners with Microsoft as well as Sitecore, uh, which is a context-based experience platform. Okay. Um, was already introduced before, but once again, Samik Roy. I manage Dynamics, which is the business applications part of Microsoft. Um, and retail is a very important part of our entire vertical. Hi, I'm uh, Sudeep, uh, Sudeep Banerjee from Shriram Auto Mall, India Limited. More or less, I am on the consumer side. We use the uh, software and uh, the tools that uh, you guys create. And uh, we have been, we are into the industry of uh, uh, disposal of uh, used uh, commercial vehicles, cars, and so on and so forth through uh, online and physical bidding platforms. And we use extensively various tools to help us achieve our uh, numbers. And uh, I'm here to you know, uh, discuss all the points that we raised, and mo most of them are found to be uh, relevant today. Sure, Great thanks. to be here. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ashish Adhikari. I represent the Microsoft Cybersecurity Practice for Asia Pacific Japan. And we are the team who help customers when there is a cyber incident or outage uh, for the customer. Thanks. Yeah, hello, everyone. I'm Prateek from Shepard. So we basically are an omnichannel digitization platform for enterprises. We are partners to Microsoft. And we have been working with various uh, players across sectors like retail, BFSI, gaming, entertainment, media and we provide them uh, the enablers and the solutions in terms of marketing automation and digitization. Sure. So starting with a bit, little bit of analytics on the panel, I think four of us, Bengalis. Uh, I'm a pseudo Bengali, <laughs> oh. not really, a bit uh, bought up in uh, Calcutta. But Pratik, let me start with you. And you know, uh, it would be great to first just get a one minute from you. You know, what, were the, what was the dynamics like in the table when, and what are the issues which really came up for discussion? Right, so uh, us was a very diverse team in terms of uh, the businesses. So we had uh, from retail, online, offline, cargo, uh, logistic business that is, and uh, even brand website. And uh, the center of the discussion uh, revolved around digitization and the challenges that people are facing in terms of uh, managing offline and online legacy businesses. Sure, uh, and uh, what do you think, like people, when you talk about these diverse business and you're starting to talk about, let's say, omnichannel, and you know, when you uh, typically see Omnichannel is largely to be able to make sure that I, as a customer, get a consistent experience. Exactly. And then there's a front end and there's a back end. And you talked about people on your table coming from a transportation logistics business. How does one handle that customer experience when you have to you know, weave through not only multiple channels at the front end, but also the operations at the back end? So what, how, how do you, what do you recommend is a good thing to do? So basically, I believe uh, marrying the data is, uh, first of all, very important. So uh, it might happen that uh, the same user uh, approaches the brand through various channels. And uh, what we discussed about was the synergies and possible solutions with which we can track the user behavior, what we uh, did on one channel. I really didn't uh, uh, want you just to talk about what was discussed in the mm -hmm. table, but considering that you know your business is largely run omnichannel. So right. you know, how do you marry the customer experience, which is a more of a front-end function, with something which is actually, you know, being delivered by a logistic player who might not be even part of uh, that particular business. How does your client deal with it? Uh, so, uh, see, logistics is a, uh, is a slightly different business altogether. So, but when you uh, even uh, talk about logistics, so there are uh, certain uh, actions that the user take uh, on the website, like request a quote or given, uh, get an estimate on uh, what will be the charges for the consignment delivery and all. 
and when the person actually uh, comes to the back end side of it. So there are there are a lot of challenges that person faces in terms of document uploads and filling out the forms. So there has to be a consistency between the same. So what currently is happening in the logistics industry is that once the uh, consignment is out for delivery and it uh, passes through various phases like a warehouse or a, a across uh, state uh, transactions, the person hardly gets a message service. So uh, we can customize it to an extent that uh, shepherds can provide uh, solutions uh, wherein the customer is updated uh, altogether throughout the journey. Uh, even the documents that are needed to be uploaded can be uploaded in the form of an app and you are not required to actually go for the physical work and uh, it, it really happens that the truck driver needs to carry those documents with him while going through these phases. So technology can really help in terms of uh, 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 what do you say, uh, making the uh, process a lot easier. And in terms of uh, the customer side, the the and uh, the person who's supposed to receive the consignment as well, we have uh, various techniques in terms of geofencing, uh, wherein he'll be regularly updated on the status of whether it has left from the warehouse. So you can send uh, notifications in the current system, but he'll be actually able to track where the truck is from his home and at the at what time he should be at his home to actually uh, receive the consignment. So thanks. Uh, Shudeep, I'll just uh, move to you and if you can give a brief on what was discussed on the table and uh, you know so, the key outcome. Sure. So uh, in our table, there were uh, two uh, players, primarily us and Room from the automobile industry and also from, we had uh, some people from the uh, you know, local so, uh, social uh, shopping platform as well. So on the commonality of the point in terms of logistics was there, uh, that was discussed and uh, like how to transmit the data and uh, different kinds of platforms are being used. Some of them are high value products like a TV or a LCD or you know uh, ACs. So those are being serviced, delivered by the ret uh, retailers themselves. Whereas the smaller items are dependent on the logistics uh, partners. Again, eff creating efficiencies in that system where we are dependent on third parties, uh, there could be tools that could be utilized was something that was discussed. From the perspective of the automobile industry and the industry we are into, uh, we had some discussion on how we work. So our constraints are very much uh, you know, on the ground and very basic. For example, we operate out of 100 plus locations in India. And many locations are such where you don't even get, get a mobile connectivity, let alone uh, utilizing an you know, advanced application for that matter. Secondly, the users we uh, have, the target segment we have, they're not at all, or we can say hardly net savvy. And to an extent, they might not even have a bank account today. They might be operating out of a post office. They use still thumb impressions for, uh, in place of signatures. So again, uh, for us, educating the customer happens to be a big challenge. Uh, there are constraints beyond, beyond our control, like the bandwidth. We can't do much about it. Uh, but there were solutions uh, which was brought to notice, and we are using it in some way that probably the data which is being collected or the software which we are utilizing right now, uh, they're capable of uh, you know, pushing the data back into the servers for our reference when net connectivity is available, when they come back after the auction day. Uh, you know. So those things are available. Something like a uh, tracking of users or the leads, lead management for that matter. Uh, also keeping in mind the expectation of the user who is coming to our automalls uh, wanting a particular type of vehicle at a particular bandwidth of price. Uh, also looking for a refinance. So these are some of the criteria on which we keep tracking. And, uh, and people who are interested to buy, we keep them intimating them uh, uh, for the subsequent events we call the events, the bidding events. And on that, we can utilize the geo-targeting geo or something like a geofencing. Right. So targeting the right consumer base, because our majority of our events are uh, happen through a physical mode. And uh, people in the vicinity of that area tend to uh, want to participate there. So we have come up with a solution for people who are slightly net savvy, who have access to a, a basic smartphone, uh, enable them participate in real time in the physical events through an online medium, provided there is connectivity. So we have come out with an app that helps to do that. And uh, he might not be physically present, but he's very much present there when the physical uh, bidding is happening, a vehicle is yeah. ramped. So Sadeep, so hold on to that thought, because I had a few, few follow-up questions there. Sure. But I'll first go to Abhiraj. And you know, Abhiraj, if you could just give a, a small brief on what was discussed. 
and anything which would be, you know, divergent from what Prateek and Shudeep have probably spoken would be, you know, anything else which was discussed on the table. Sure. I think we had a very uh, interesting few minutes at our table because uh, there were points of view from various kinds of people. Um, we are a nation which is exploding in terms of commerce, retail and the entire digital uh, revolution. And it was interesting to see, you know, points of view from different stakeholders in the entire chain. So we had people who are actually running um, digital businesses, right? We had people who were on the banking side of things. We had people who were on the finance, regulation, and logistics side of things. And we also had the customer's viewpoint. Ultimately, it's all about the customer. So um, what emerged was some very interesting points what the customer experiences and what the brand which is selling or the, or the business that is selling, what is their perspective on the same thing, uh, that made for a very interesting hearing. Uh, similarly, if a particular business is running into some issues with things like you know, payments, for instance, how, does, how can the bank help or how can regulation of the government help, right? Um, and then there was this entire thing about today we are in a business where you know, for generations, there have been traditional businesses, uh, brick and mortar businesses, large corporates, and today they almost have no choice but to jump onto digital, right, and do it in a big way. So, um, uh, somebody made a comment that you know, 15 years of learning, and here you 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 want e-commerce companies to actually do it in 15 weeks and deliver great products, great experience, great price, and keep your customer happy and loyal. That's that's a big ask. So, you know, I think there were some very, very interesting points that came up during the conversation and that was brought I in. I think you raised a very uh, pertinent point, point, you know, in today's world. And the more that we, you know, talk to our clients uh, nowadays, I think what they are telling us is that brand is becoming primary. Reputational risk is something that, you know, everybody is waking up to and I'm glad we have Ashish, so we'll come to the question on cyber as well. But, uh, you know, some, I wanted to ask you one thing. You've heard from all of them. You know, you've talked, you talked about logistics, they've talked about customer experience, they've talked about brand. When you go to your client, one is, you know, what, what is the top of that mind? Where does leakage start happening? Where, you know, you're not converging the customer experience with what the brand promises? I think... Uh there are two aspects. The first of all, and if I can come back to what the first panelist said, is whether we are getting one view of the customer. And that is very, very important. Um, you know, in the retail world, it's not about only the omni-channel, but it's also this divide of physical retail versus online retail. But it comes back to one aspect, that do we have one source or one platform which is empowering this entire business process. Let's pause you there and let me take a poll out here. So how many of you deal with customers? I'm assuming everybody, right? How many of you are com comfortable about getting the one view of customer? And you can put your hand on your heart and say that, yeah, I can say that I have all the information for the customer, considering that we are talking digital, we are talking databases out here. By a show of hand, that I know my customer. Great. So we'll come to you and we'll just try to see, you know, how do you do it and what makes you comfortable out here. Sorry. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and that shows where the pain point is, right? Because, and it's very simple. We all get calls today to try and sell something. So a person calls you and says, do you want a credit card? Somebody calls you and says, I'm giving you a loan, right? They all come, the calls come from an outsourced company or from an in-source call center of an organization which gives you lots of products and services. Just try one thing. Tell the guy, okay, I don't want an insurance, but I want a credit card. And the call ends there. Correct? But that same organization is also trying to sell you a credit card. But there is no linkage because these are all different systems, but it's the same customer. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have that one empowerment across. And when you talk about retail, not only about the customer, even about your definition of your products and services. Let's say you, you put a promotion on and you are in online as well as in store. That promotion should be there on both the sides. Today you don't have it because they are clearly separate divides. This is a different system, this is a different system, but you are the same organization. I think that is important to bring together the whole organization as one brand. And I come back to your question. How successful have people been in doing that? Just uh, any case that you think where you know they've been able to get all of it together? So I'll tell you what, 
people who have a lot of legacy, okay, for them it is difficult because these systems have come over time, they are point solutions to put it all together is different. Um, but they are slowly, slowly replacing systems or patching up systems together to start with their pain points, the, the place of highest pain point and go down uh, the, the value chain. But people who are new recognize this aspect. We have many customers who say, don't tell me what I need today. Tell me what I will need tomorrow, correct? And I think that's a very big change from what you and me have experienced in this industry five years ago, where people said, no, 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 please don't talk, talk to me about the future because everybody comes and promises the future. Tell me what can I do today? So nobody looked at anything beyond the call center. Nobody looked at anything beyond the sales force. Nobody looked at anything beyond service. Absolutely. Very good point. And if somebody could hand over a mic to the gentleman out there, we'd love to hear, you know, what is it that two or three things that, uh, you know, you talk, you think happened to get you this uh, one view of customer? Hi, am I audible? Yeah. Um, so I think uh, echoing the point that he mentioned, uh, the newer businesses, because we are a new business, uh, we could see this co uh, challenge coming. And uh, the advantage is that being a platform. Can you introduce yourself and uh, if you don't mind, yeah, let sorry, us know sure. the company as well. Yeah, my name is Ashish and I'm from Roposo. Roposo is a fashion discovery platform, uh, kind of like an Instagram for fashion. Um, so the advantage that we have is that we're a single platform. We don't have an omni-channel presence, right? Um, so understanding the consumer is the value add in, that we provide to the ecosystem. Um, so uh, for us, because we were built from the ground up, keeping in mind that we have to understand the consumer at each touch point they have with our app or our website, it was easier to build that system that I think some of the legacy businesses might be facing as a challenge. Because they have to relook at their systems and see, oh, where is the customer, what's the touch point, how is it tying into my business. Our business was always from the, you know, from the get-go thought of that way. That unless we understand the customer, we won't be able to provide value. Yeah, and I think that's a brilliant point because, you know, something that we tell our clients is that we are so used to doing business in terms of what I can provide rather than what my customer wants that, you know, we sort of uh, always lose sight of, you know, that particular fact. So let's have an outside in view and first try to understand who's my customer, what they want, create the kind of personas, journeys, you know, before we start doing that. Uh, so great, great point out here. You know, uh, Ashish, while we are listening to all of this, what tri strikes me out here is that nobody talked about the security of the data. You know, and, uh, you know, today, and without naming the sites, we know it happened in US. I mean, it was like, a, you know, extramarital kind of an, uh, you know, site yep. for people. It got leaked. There were people who, you know, Ashley Medicine. Yeah, Ashley, yeah, without naming that. I was just saying this. <laughs> no, thanks for that. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering, on, on a priority basis for the retailers, where do you see this uh, topic at all? Because, you know, I would be very worried if my data was all over the place. Okay, so Rashna, it's, it's a very, very interesting viewpoint. And uh, I would say for most of the organization, security does comes as afterthought. And there are valid reasons for that. So if you look at a company which is a startup, they're not looking at security first. They're looking at first reaching out to a customer. They're looking at low cost. Uh, they're looking at other ways to grow business. Because if you invest in security, uh, it's not going to give you 10 more customers. But if you don't invest in security, it definitely one day will lose, you may end up losing all your customers. So it's, it's, it's a balance. And uh, in my view, uh, for a startup versus for an established company, it does make a difference. And I'll give you an example. If you, if you look at this gentleman uh, who's, who's now the CEO of Patanji, Balakrishnan, right? Agreed. So I was watching a TV interview of him, and uh, he has only two luxury assets, one iPhone and the other, I think, a Range Rover car. And he was asked, why does he has this car? Why not another car? Now, same guy, just 10 years back, uh, probably maybe riding on a scooter or a bike. And his answer was, I feel more safe in the car. So what happened? The roads are better, but now his value is increased, right? And he's starting value security more and more. So same, I think, is with the companies. It's about a curve they take on. And as they grow and the reputation comes into play, I think it comes along, but not at the start is what I see. Sure, 
and, and I'm just wondering as a uh, end customer, how, do, we, do we care? I mean, should the retailers worry? Because do we care? I mean, we sign, give our PAN cards freely and now there's, you know, the huge amount of that social media thing going on. When you sign your PAN card, you know, say what reason is it for, otherwise it'll be used. So, do we care? I mean, so, as So, look consumers. from this perspective, today, if you have to shop, now all of us, while we may be owning retail as a business or being a part of it in different roles, we also are consumers in one facet and we go out and, and you know, shop. Now, if there is the same product available to you at a portal A versus a portal B, and portal B is having a higher brand reputation, you feel more safe transacting with them, because the subconscious mind, the way it will work is, I would rather buy from portal B, at, at times the price may also be expensive. So as a retailer, if you're look, looking at a long haul, you would have to think, is my view. So, uh, you know, Abhiraj, coming back to you per se, uh, you know, out there, in your, uh, you know, daily job, you know, that you do uh, with the cl uh, your clients out here, what do, you, what do you see the clients talking about the most in today's world? Is it just about, you know, I need to, uh, you know, get more revenue or have they shifted to saying that, no, I need to create more customer experience? What, what's happening? And how are they resolving that problem? I think... Um, the key thing that most customers are grappling, most of our customers are grappling with is that, and this is a universal thing, it's a uni universal phenomenon everywhere you go, not just in India, is that customers like you and me who are shopping online or, you know, businesses who are buying, you know, from other businesses, customers are really, you know, the smartest people around. And, and therefore, the, the entire dynamic has changed. And I'm, I'm just... I'm just saying that's something that most of us know already. But the implications of this are felt in everyday lives of a business. And when these businesses come to us and say that, look, my acquisition costs are high, you know, I'm, you know, I have a customer base, but you know, now the conversation has, has changed, especially in the past two years. The conversations are more like, yeah, I have customers, but they're going away. And why are they going away? That's what I want to find out. And I want to fix that quickly because I have spent years of money, effort on technology, on strategy, on you know what have you to acquire these customers. But now, if I lose them and start losing them rapidly, then I mean I'll be in a, I'll be in a super. I have to shut shop. I mean, for some businesses, it's that critical. And you know, trust me, today when we go and book a cab, right? Brand loyalty is 2.5 minutes. I get an Ola earlier and an Uber after 2.5 minutes. So seven out of ten customers will go for the Ola. So you know, if if that's what separates brand loyalty from churn, then we are in a tough business, you know, and it's going to get even tougher in the years to come. So you know, our customers when they come to us, they say, "Look, I want to fix customer experience." That's the conversation. It's not revenue. It's not anything else. It's customer experience because if you fix that, or if you get down that path, you'll go a long way in having long-time customers. Um, and things which used to sound old-fashioned earlier, like lifetime value, and now fancier terms like NPS and stuff, but they're all relevant, super relevant, and that's the conversation that you know our customers have with us today. It's all about customer experience. So I've had the fortune of working in this uh, with this industry for the last 10, 12 years now, and I think one of the things that I've learned, and you know, we did enough reports and uh, researches to be able to do that, is that Indian customer is actually very promiscuous. You know, and specifically if you're talking about the e-commerce, uh, you know, out there, uh, you know, and you have policy bazaars and the other comparison sites of the world, I will go for what is, uh, you know, least cost. So if I'm getting, a, you know, something of a shoe at some particular site which is cheaper and at the same time, and probably the right thing to do. So my question, you know, again to people out here, uh, and not so much as the panelists, but I would love to hear from someone out there, when you're talking about the customer being promiscuous and India being a country where cost drives everything, how do, how do you see, you know, a customer experience coming from that particular base? Anybody who's had an experience of, you know, moving a paradigm or the needle from just a cost base to a value based? Anybody, I mean, who would want to talk about their own experience out here or any of the panelists who want to take it up then? Anyone with a show of hand, it would be great to hear. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. 
please introduce yourself and yeah i am siddharth i am the founder of shepherds uh, um, we provide omni channel digitization platform uh, like you rightly said customers churn because what they see value at that moment itself like the taxi example which we just discussed right if it's 2 minutes away 3 minutes away earlier we waiting for 45 minutes for a taxi uh, what, what one has to see is little connected with security also and i'll take a very simple example uh, i come from a small town in nagpur and if you go there and, and to a panwala and if you raise your hand he he will tell you oh, this is the pan which this guy eats right he knows your pan and if he does not know then you're not known in the city so you lose your uh, clout in the market personalization to a level where you take information enough that you you make your customer more aware uh, make things more contextual is very very important and if you remember that for a customer the longevity with that customer will increase because he, the guy who shops from a particular place i know you go to a particular restaurant because they know what you like they know what you drink uh, bringing gamification loyalty programs associated with other than just selling will increase that Uh, pr- like amazon prime and similar type of uh, uh, what should i say programs across uh, uh, retail uh, uh, online um, uh, enterprises are moving towards that the uh, ola select for example ola select is something where they say that if you t- take a subscription no matter what the search pricing is your the pricing will be same for you you will be always upgraded for if you search for a mini car you will be always upgraded for a, a um a prime car or a luxury car so customer will stay even if it is a little costlier as far as he see as a long term value but if he see something which is very transactional at this moment oh this gadget is for 500 rupees other gadget is for 550 just for 50 rupees he will charge that's excellent i mean when you're talking about personalization personalization also means that you know rachna buys when it's commodity in this particular behavior and when she you know goes for value it was great point that you've made I'll just ask, uh, and Arjuna, you have to put up your hand with me. Yeah, sorry, did you want to add something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Arjuna, you have to give me a cue when I need to stop. But I think your lunch is already served. I'll, I'll add something on this point. Yeah, sure. Later. Go ahead. On the same point that you raised, and uh, I wanted to raise my hand first, but uh, uh, the gentleman there. Okay, so I think. you write that indian indian customer is very price centric in in a way that if you get something cheaper somewhere you would much rather go there than go with the website selling it on a higher price but there is also there is also a sect of customer customer base which is very brand loyal and uh, us being uh, we so i represent clovia which is an online lingerie first uh, portal brand loyalty for a product company as regards the marketplace is much different and much more unique when you and then there is all always apple right apple is doing something which uh, otherwise the world couldn't do so you if you give quality and if you give uh, something different and something extra from what the competition is giving there is always a brand loyalty that kicks in and for us when when uh, we started out the the loyalty comes in much later right after 6 months when you've used and when you've experienced what uh, what the company is offering but when it kicks in you see that the repeats go up and the repeats when they go up and that's what abhiraj also talked about it's not about acquiring it's about retaining the customer more right so when we started out we realized it much much earlier that for us retaining the customer because we are a brand and that we've been successfully able to do because we offer very different and very unique products in a way that it's very uh, and we were on our uh, round table we were talking about it that we started out with a few set of customers private private uh, hosting then private then a little open and then to the market so that i think that experience when it come kicks in it's the brand loyalty is there and then the cost does not matter as much right yes, so microsoft and apple are both clients for uh, you know uh, kpmg but i'll be a bit uh, you know if i would say a bit uh, 
uh, provocative out here. Uh, you know, and uh, you raised a, a great point when you talked about retention being much more difficult than actually, you know, acquiring. And that's a point I think everybody's getting it today. Uh, so, and I would take two products. Microsoft has a great product, the Surface out here. I don't know if I want to go for another iPad or would I go for a Surface because it gives me much, much more, uh, you know, uh, much, much more this thing. So when we are talking about something like this, to add to your point, I think reinventing oneself is also, you know, every time would you want to spend 70,000 bucks to get a new uh, iPhone is also something, you know, when it adds little features out there is also something. So I think when we say, uh, you know, customer loyalty product is at the heart of it. It's a given. So that's something which has to sell. So great point. Samit, you wanted to add something, yep. but I know I'm running short of time. I would also want somebody from the panel to talk, marry the customer experience with analytics. Anybody who puts up the hand after you too. So you can go ahead with the point that okay. you're trying. So I, I probably just wanted to emphasize on one thing. When we talk of customer experience, it's very broad. It starts from the first time somebody reaches out to a prospect to the entire sales experience, to the entire customer service, et cetera, et cetera. I think it's very important to understand what aspect of customer experience would you need to focus on. That comes back to the brand, that comes back to the DNA of an organization. Okay, so I'll, and I'll give you an example. When Satya or Microsoft says, our mission is to empower every individual and every organization on the planet to do more and be more, we mean it. We will never talk about what's our market share, what's our value, shareholder value, etc. That's important. In my opinion, and especially because you talked about a cost-sensitive economy, most of the people who talk about the customer experience talk about the sales aspect of it. It's all about the sales aspect of it. It's all about customer acquisitions, right? Today we are doing a lot of projects for hospitals. And every hospital talks about how do I get referrals? How do I attract doctors? How do I get this guy to come in? But very few people talk about the post-sales experience. And I think that's where is the difference between brand, loyalty, and profitability of an organization. In any organization, the customers who are more profitable are the people who pay extra. Those people need service, right? And the cost don't matter. That service is extremely important. That's not just a call center. And I think that aspect of experience is important. Sure. Uh, so either Shudeep or Pratik, if you could, you know, just tell me that when you are talking about customer experience and you're talking about, you know, omni-channel out here, how are you marrying analytics with that? That would be great to, you know, uh, if Pratik, you would want to articulate first. So I'll, I'll just quote an example for that. Since uh, in the trading industry, whenever a person is like, uh, just to give you an idea, in terms of analytics, if the person is just viewing a particular commodity or der derivative type, and he has done it and uh, at the same time uh, if some follow up is given to that particular customer on that very particular product type in terms of if you want to request a call back with an expert at, at, as per your convenience so you can schedule the uh, call. Generally what happens in this industry is that as soon as you trigger something, you submit a, a request button or you view something, immediately the call center calls them up uh, irrespective of whether the person is actually uh, willing to take a call or not. So what we can do in uh, this uh, scenario is that uh, uh, once he has expressed his interest, so that, that part is analytics. How many times has viewed, you can uh, create cases around it. And uh, post that uh, notifications could be sent to him to like uh, arrange, uh, like schedule as per his convenience a callback from the experts. Uh, what about you, uh, Shudeep? I know you, are you more of a consumer of the analytics which comes to you or do you? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, we use a lot of analytics. You? Yeah, so <coughs> we keep, uh, we have a lot of requirement for trend analysis. Uh, of course, we monitor our business happening at the uh, ground level, at the zone, at the region level, and the profitabilities are reflected at that level. That's how we measure it. <clears throat> so internal analysis as well as in terms of performance and obviously on the customer side also, because our business is into multiple product categories. So uh, if we talk about vehicles, it starts from two-wheelers to construction equipment. So uh, when we do an auction, uh, this bidding events happen, so the, there could be a mix of different products or there could be a specialized product category for which we are doing an uh, event. So uh, we need to target, uh, reach out to the consumer who is in relevant to that particular product category rather than calling everybody. So we invite people uh, to the right segment based on earlier pur purchase trends or sometimes it is the user who has been acquired recently. He came along with another user in our previous event and 
we would like to invite him and if similar need is uh, recorded, so we say that this vehicle is also available, you want it here, it's happening tomorrow or uh, so you uh, again invited there. So. Uh, we do a lot of analysis. So I'll give you another thing which is happening a lot in the industry now and I think a lot of clients are coming back to us and talking about setting up analytic COEs now. So basically saying that if my, uh, you know, guy, the sales guy goes out today, I should be able to tell him where to go Correct. and what to sell. So I think, you know, that's something that we are seeing. I just come one last question to you, Ashish. And while Ashish is answering the question, there's a rapid fire and I'm, you know, giving you a surprise test now. So if there was one point that you wanted to leave the audience with when we're talking of retail, when you're talking about technology, all of it, what would it that be? Ashish, I'll come to you last for the rapid sure. fire, so you'll still have time to think. Okay. But, you know, while we're talking about all of these things, I think another trend, uh, retailers, and I don't know how many of you are on open source out here? Not many? Okay, so I've seen a trend of, you know, going to open source largely because, you know, retail tend, tends to be a very, uh, you know, large, large portion of it until unless you're in uh, very, in, uh, you know, categories which give you that kind of a margin. I think a lot of them I've seen starting to see get, get a lot into the open source. How does one manage, uh, you know, something, uh, the sec cyber security and marry it with something which is open source? So, so let me answer it this way. For a moment, think that we're not in a dot-com discussion. And I mean, while he's answering, you have to yeah. think. Huh? So go back, let's say, 20 years. And I would love to hear from the audience as well. I'm sorry, I'm just interjecting you. Any last thing that, you know, your takeaway? So as I was saying, if you go back 20, 30 years and you, and you visualize Delhi, you will probably have Kanat Place or Chandni Chok and the shops there. What was their biggest risk then, regardless of whether they had an open source setup shop or a proprietary setup shop or a bank funded shop or a shop run by two brothers or whatever that format could be okay the biggest risk in those days was if there would be a riot then they'll have to close the shop or if there is some law and order situation the shop would get closed and every day the shop gets closed that's a business loss now, if you come to a dot com era where you're building a shop now whether you build that cart system the dot com e marketplace system with an open source or with a proprietary software or with XYZ, the risk still is what if tomorrow an attack happens and in the dot com era it may not be ROIT, it could be EROIT. And the EROIT is nothing but a DDoS attack in, in today's world. And in the E space, the types and patterns of attacks are variously different. For example, you could be a dot com spending millions of dollars on customer acquisition and then on retaining as the team has discussed. But what if there is a smart cookie sitting in your office who has access to the list of all the customers? He just generates a list, copies in a USB and walks out and hands it over to a new dot com or probably sets his own dot com and he has probably a potential list of millions of customers and what he needs to know is they are price sensitive. All I need to do is lower the value by 10 rupees or 10 dollars. So those are kind of risk and to answer whether it's an open source or not. A large part of this answer lies in dot com and the automation moving into cloud, which provides security by default. It could provide prevention from whether DDoS or ways in which the data can be protected and can't be you know, freely used or misused. Yeah. So I learned a new term, e-riot, uh, today. So viral riot out there. Mm -hmm. But one of the topics that you just talked about, I think you might want to have another session with ET on that. That is whether, you know, uh, security on cloud. And I'm sure there are a lot of opinions uh, on that. And actually more uh, people worried about these things than actual, uh, you know, speculation, I would say. Unless, unless see, if, if you recollect again 30 years back, people never used to lock their homes also. Till the environment made Absolutely. specifically after 9-11 mm. made more and more you know protectionist and the mindset behaved in that fashion sure. and I'm sure in this new world as those things will come are inevitable that would come back Absolutely, and people are saying with the new monetization that has come in we might not need locks at home at all so <laughs> Uh, but uh, Abhiraj, your last few uh, points on, uh, you know, just one point which comes to your mind. So a thought that you wanted to leave uh, people with. And if you have somebody from Microsoft, we could jot down, you know, these points. And uh, I think, you know, it's a great uh, opportunity to go back to the retailers on what's top of their mind. So Abhiraj, over to you. Great. I think, so I'm not sure how many, how many of the people in the room have heard of the challenger sales model. 
Um, it's a very interesting model and it's based on three, three premises. Uh, one is, uh, <clears throat> is your customer willing to buy from you? The second is, are they willing to buy more and more from you? And the third is, are they willing to refer you to other people? And the entire world of sales marketing, offline and online, everything boils down to this. We may have different models of selling, digital or offline, but if these three things are taken care of, uh, everything else takes care of itself. And I think he made a great point about customer experience being across the life cycle and you know, traversing various facets of a customer's journey. It's not about the sale, it's what happens after the sale. Uh, it's what happens with the product support, with the experience. That's where the loyalty and referral factors kick in, or advocacy. So, you know, in, you know what I feel very strongly about is that um, brands and businesses need to measure every single customer interaction at every touch point. It's a hard task to do. And believe you me, there are very few brands out there which are doing a good job of it. But unless and until you make that start, it's not going to happen. So unless you measure that interaction at every touch point, how will analytics help you? And you know, how will you ever get to see you know, a single version of truth, one view of the customer, all those, all those great things. You actually answered your, uh, uh, this uh, comment in the first thing that you made. The third point that you talked about, will you refer me? That's the Correct. net promoter score. So if, you know, if you're not referable, you know, no. there's chances customers not coming back. And since I wanted it to be a rap rapid fire, I think I'll just move on to Samik sure. out here with your permission. <clears throat> Samik, rapidly. Last thought, uh, remember the power of social. Right? I think a lot of the things that we are talking about, the test is in social. Because it's the only place where people can speak what they want to speak. Right? You're not reaching out to them. They're just saying it. And when you say that I am customer centric as the head of an organization or the head of the business, the first thing or the last thing you do in the day is you look at how much sale you have done, you're actually looking at what your customers are saying out there. Sure. Right? Should you? Well, uh, <clears throat> I come from an industry where we use the word know your customer. So it's not just restricted to a PAN card or a serial number. Mm. It's actually the organization needs to know his customer, what he actually wants. And there are tools and which are enablers to business. And uh, if we actually know our customer needs as well as his preferences and we try to meet them, uh, I think that is the key to success. And in terms of tools, as we are talking, uh, I think complexity or the absence of it will make a difference in terms of, uh, you know, adaption. Sure. Great point. And I'm actually tempted. Anybody from banks out here? Anybody from a bank here? Okay, great. So I remember one of our ex-deputy uh, directors of the bank, actually, you know, governors of the bank, actually saying that how can we even talk about customer experience out here while all that we did in all of this year was to, you know, cater to the regulator and customer for me is just a number. So we'll come back to you and, you know, take your last view on that. But I told you I'll come to you last, so I'll go to Prateek first. Okay, so in terms of like Shepard's omni-channel perspective, uh, I'll make uh, actionable analytics, uh, customized targeting, <coughs> data integration, security and exposure, and time to market and automated marketing. Great. What about you, your last okay, one? Thanks. So it's a fireside kind of a round. So I think I would say don't make security an afterthought, uh, else you may be there for a rude shock. And become part of Ashish's <laughs> business plan. Please do that. Uh, so some last word from you. Why don't you start? You know, any last uh, comment? And uh, in case you have uh, you know, questions for the panelists, we can do it over lunch. Uh, so why don't you go ahead? Uh, thanks so much. Uh, my name is Ramneet. I work with City. I'm a share in uh, full disclosure, these views are personal. But I think uh, you made a very uh, relevant point, uh, the need for us to understand the regulation, uh, regulations, the need for us to understand what the regulator's thought process is, is extremely crucial. Uh, the part of the business that I represent in city is about uh, um, managing a set of clients which are in the e-commerce, digital payments and the startup world. And I often find on our discussions, whether it's in the boardroom or the operating meetings, that uh, the regulations today could be a very large opportunity or a very large threat in the business model. And some of these things have come to fray as fintechs have grown in the country. So I agree to your point. 
my only two cents out here are uh, while we are rapidly aping the models of the West, I think uh, the regulator out here has a very large mandate to bring about inclusion in a very democratic way. So sometimes it's very important to understand what really are the core strengths of our country and how do we play to that. So those are my thoughts. Thank you. Sure, that's, that's a great point actually because when we are talking about customer experience, there are so many other things, you know, that one needs to consider. Any other last point from, yeah, Siddharth? I'll, I'll just go back to the omni-channel thing which we discussed and the social part. See, today, just a week before uh, Trump won the election, right, and mainstream media completely, uh, completely uh, could not predict at all whatever, whatever data they got because data was looked only from a particular segment and a, from a particular medium. Uh, when we say omni-channel, today a customer touches across channels. It can be social, it can be web, it can be physical and so on and so forth. What is the most convergent path of the person taking people search on the web, buy on mobile? Uh, people might go to a physical store, taste the product, but go on, uh, go online and buy. The ability for uh, enterprises uh, to predict what the customer is going to do based on them be their behavior, instead of preempting and deciding, oh, this is what will work, uh, using analytics there and using sentiment. Uh, analysis are also seeing other, other mediums, bringing that and making it actionable is what is future. Instead of we deciding what will happen, nobody could imagine that in one year a guy who cannot read can actually start a trip and end a trip because starting a trip by the driver is green and ending a trip is uh, red. So let the customer decide uh, and let tools enable the um, uh, uh, marketeer to take informed decisions. Yeah, great. Any other last point? We have the same people speaking, so I'll give you another last point after that gentleman has spoken, <laughs> if there's any more. So, I think for me, uh, the last point, because this is a very uh, startups, all of all the companies are startups, so I was talking to a VC a few days back and he said, it's when the company starts to be led by salespeople it's when the company starts to go downwards. Oh, wow. So it's important Somebody for you to sell people, yeah, please. concentrate on your product, on why you, why you came up in the market and started doing what you're doing. Yeah, that That's opens another debate we don't have time for. <laughs> but in interest of diversity, I haven't heard from any of the women in the room. Yes, sir. Go ahead. When it comes to the last uh, uh, words to say, so I would like to take it from the, uh, the tagline which is mentioned here, the digital transformation. I would like to mention as engage with customer, empower the employees and transform the business. Excellent. So that sort of sum ups everything out here. But to my heartfelt thanks to the audience. I mean, you've been great. I think this format is lovely. So thanks, Archana and uh, you know, Microsoft for doing that. And thanks for the lively discussion. Thank you, panelists. Sure. I mean, it's Thank an you. honor to be, you know, uh, have, you know, been here. And thanks a ton for all the insights. And I'm sure, Ashna, we're baking from lunch after this. Yes, we, we shall so be. Thank so you. after the food for, food for thought, there's a lot of sumptuous meal. So a big clap for all of us. I think we became, a, from the conference, we became a community. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, Rachna and ev all the panelists. I think we made our panelists work very hard. And I think you guys were well represented in all these guys. So thank you so much. And as a small token of our appreciation, um, can I request my team to, yeah, can, can we quickly get this?